Welcome! I'm Jim Clemonton, Technology Evangelist for Midnight Coders and its integration server, WebOrb. This is the second part of a two-part screencast. In the first part, called Your First WebOrb-Enabled .NET Service, we built a .NET class library and deployed its single method as an internet service using WebOrb for .NET. In this second part, we'll build a Flex-based client to invoke this .NET service and display its result. In this screencast, you will learn to call a .NET service asynchronously from a Flex client and update the client's user interface to reflect the service's result. Let's examine the web page that summarizes this sample. The sample application is quite simple. Press the Invoke button and, after a slight pause, the string Hello World appears. This string was returned by a remote procedure call to a server-side object method. That's all it does. Let's open FlexBuilder and look at the client-side application. Our client-side's application has two fields, Hello Service and Service Model. Let's talk about Service Model first. Service Model is just a primitive string. It's declared to be bindable. Whenever its value changes, anything bound to it will be updated. We'll see how that works shortly. Hello Service is defined to be of type remote object and is initialized to null. In response to Flex's creation complete event, the init function is called. It's defined right here. The init method's job in this application is the allocation and initialization of a new remote object instance to encapsulate the server-side object that we deployed into WebOrb in the previous half of this screencast. Remote object is a flex class. For this sample, its two most important properties are destination, passed in as an argument to its constructor. In most samples, this will be generic destination as it is here. Other destinations will be discussed in later samples. The second property is source, which is the fully qualified path name of the class to which the method belongs. To get that fully qualified path name, hello zero server, hello world service, we look at the source code and we see exactly the same pattern. Namespace, hello zero server, class, hello world service. So that's where the fully qualified path name for the source variable comes from. The application's init method also registers to event listeners. Got error here to listen for fault events and got result to listen for result events on the get hello world string service. If we get an error, then got error is called. It displays a fairly standard error alert and it sets the service model string to the word error. On the other hand, if we get a proper result from the service call, then the got result method is called. It sets the service model string to the service result. The application's next method, on click, is called whenever the invoke button is clicked. On click does two things. First, it sets the service model string to the string invoking, and second, it does the actual invocation of the hello service remote object. Now, the whole point of Flex's remote object class is that it makes an asynchronous call to the encapsulated service, not a synchronous call. The client application's flow of control continues past the service call without waiting for its result. When the asynchronous call does return a value, the application's got result method will be called, and it will update the service model string with the function result. Which brings us to the application's user interface. This interface consists of only two controls, a button which, when clicked, calls the application's onClick method, which makes the asynchronous service call, and there's also a label. Its text field is bound to the application's service model string, so that whenever service model changes, the label's text field changes too. 
That is the basic pattern used in all flex remoting. Now we'll build a project to hold this code to show how to set all of the project's properties and path names. In Flash Builder, select File, New, New Project. This brings up the new Flex Project dialog. We'll name this project Foo because the name really doesn't matter. Under Project Location, we'll accept the default Client Foo. We can click it Browse button and define this path to be anything we want. For Application Type, we'll accept the default Web because that's what we're going to build. WebOrb works fine with Air and will cover Air in later screencasts. For Flex SDK version, we'll accept the default, which is currently 3.5. We could work fine with uh, Flex 4, but I'm building my sample applications to be as broadly compatible as possible, so I'm using an older Flex SDK. For server technology, we'll select ASP.NET. Since we're targeting WebOrb for .NET, and ASP dominates there. With that, we can select Next. That brings up the Configure ASP.NET Server. Under Server Type, we'll select Use Internet Information Services, known as IIS. Under Server Location, we need to enter the Web Application Root. This is a file system directory into which we've previously deployed WebOrb for .NET. We also need to enter a web or, or rather a web application URL. This is an IIS virtual directory. If you're not familiar with virtual directories under IIS or ASP.NET, then I encourage you to take a look to search for create virtual directory and you'll find many screencasts that can educate you about the relationship between the file system directory and the virtual directory or web application URL. After you've entered these two, you need to validate the configuration. And in this case, the web application root and URL are valid. We'll accept the compiled Flex application location default and click Next. So in this case, where it's a very simple application, we do not need to add the web orb SWIC. Most of the examples we create will need that, but this one does not. So we'll click Finish. And with that, we're almost done creating this project. Notice that a little sample or a little skeletal foo.xml file gets generated. We'll come back to that in a moment. First, we'll right click on the project file, go down to properties, the flex compiler options. We look at the additional compiler arguments field. And there, I'm going to paste in path name to the services config.xml file associated with this deployment of WebOrb. The documentation discusses the purposes of this configuration file. I'm not going to cover it here. With that, I'll click OK. And now we have covered all of the settings for this project. Of course, there's no code in here to speak of, so I'm going to go back to the client application we discussed previously and open up its source code. And I'm just going to copy all of that code out with select all, copy that, go to foo.xml, copy all, or select all of it, paste in the new stuff, close the old project, and now we'll go to foo and debug it as a web application. Up comes the client. As you can see, it has nothing but the invoke button. I press that and we get the server side string. And that's that. In this screencast, we showed how to call a remote service asynchronously from a Flex client application and update the client's user interface to reflect the service's result. Happy coding!